Hello everybody and welcome back to another Addicted Fishing video. Today we are bringing you the best, quite possibly the only video you will ever need to watch to learn how to trout fish. And we're starting from scratch. We're doing this bare bones edition. Walking into Walmart, we're gonna grab each product, get completely set up to go do this and show you guys pretty much exactly what it'll cost and what it'll take to go out there and enjoy some trout fishing. Stick around everybody, you're not gonna wanna miss this. Okay, first things first, the thing we all love buying is the rod. And as you can see, it can be overwhelming. There are some setups around here that already have the reels. We'll go over there and talk about those in a second. But if I have my choice and I wanna buy something nice, I'm gonna buy this one right here. This is about $57, you can see. Oh no, actually, how much is the trout rod? It probably says on the rod, so let's look here. Nope, it doesn't say on the rod. But anyways, this is the rod I would buy. This is an SST seven foot six, four to 10 pound rod. The reel I would put on that thing. I don't see no Kuma reels here to pair it with, which my favorite are again are Okumas. So what we're gonna, oh, nope, 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 no nope. Okumas at this one, but some Walmarts will. There's no Kuma, they're big salmon rods. If you buy an Okuma, it'll be a 30 series reel. But anything from this right here, this one's a 3,000 again, or 2,000. You don't wanna go with anything in the 4,000 range. That's too big of a reel. So that's the difference there. As the numbers go down, the reel gets smaller. So anything from a one to a 3000 series, but a 3000 series reel is my favorite. So right now we're looking with the super nice reel and the Okuma, we're looking at about $70 for your rod. Now, there's other cheaper options, obviously, in the store, but we'll go over here and look at the pretty much the exact same thing with line, with reel for $23. And this is your perfect, this is the Shakespeare it is two to six pounds, again, right in that four to 10, two to six pound line rating. And this already has the reel on it. It comes with the reel. It's a really good bargain, obviously, and you get fishing line to start. But as you become a little more advanced fisherman, you're gonna want something in the nicer range. So you'll have to come back to this video, look at that rod again. The Okuma SST, four to 10, or something like this, the Shakespeare, four, six, two to six pound rod for 23.74, Black Friday special. Cause it's Black Friday, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay, now for the meat and potatoes, what we're gonna feed these fish and how we're gonna catch them. I'm gonna show you guys three of my favorite methods. It'll be three very simple ones to set up, three very effective ones, and three that you can pretty much use anywhere that you go fishing for trout. So number one is gonna be good old fashioned power bait setup. And just like the rod, this can be overwhelming. That is a lot of different kinds of power bait. I like to go with at least two. Try to fit into your budget two different flavors and two different styles of power bait. So we have our power eggs here in all different colors. And these are very, very, very easy to just throw on the hook. It's nice if you have kids, it's less messy, and it is very, very effective. So I am gonna look for my favorite ones. You guys can make your choice. I like these two-tone ones like this in the power eggs, and usually the one that is scented. There are, again, a lot of flavors, a lot of styles, but I usually like to go with my alma mater, Turbo Dough, a little bit of glitter, a little bit of red and chartreuse, and there is all kinds of different colors and tastes, of course. But my personal favorite is this one right here. Just a good old fashioned chartreuse green or chartreuse yellow and a little bit of glitter. That'll get the job done. Okay, now we're gonna obviously need something to put our bait on. And again, overwhelming. I'm not gonna quit stressing that. I, don't, I feel bad for you guys out there who are just getting into this because it's not that simple, especially if you're at a store that doesn't have anybody around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for a bait hook here. This is $2. This is a size six quantity of 10, and that is the perfect size hook for trout fishing, especially with the power bait or a night crawler. It's a size six. But another option, other than just doing the hook, is a pre tied leader. Because our next step is going to be to buy leader line. You can buy these leader lines, but for me, if I'm getting into fishing, I want to have more line than not. So if you buy these little setups here, you're kind of stuck to just using that method or that length of leader. And we'll talk more about the specifics here as time goes on. So Mustad Fishing also has packs like this, but this is a really good starter pack where you got pretty much everything. You got egg weights, it's $10, so we can you can see the efficiency, but some places might not have this. So I'm going to show you guys everything. We have egg wakes, split shots, swivels, hooks. Very cost effective, but after you add it all up, you can pretty much get everything. Because what happens a lot in packs like these is there's some stuff that you'll never use, and you really end up spending more money for what you need um, if you buy those value packs. So let's keep going onto our line. So when going for line and going for something that's gonna last and be effective and not lose fish, I'm gonna go for the higher quality stuff. You can buy super cheap lines. As you can see, there's some here that are cheaper than others, but 
is you're gonna lose fish, you're gonna have a harder time tying good knots, and it's gonna ultimately make it harder to learn. So I'm gonna go with a four pound test. This is maximum ultra green. My favorite is tough line, but I don't see any tough line light enough here today. So we're going with a four pound maxima ultra green. This is a nice small spool. This will last you. It's very cost effective. It's $5. And it should be enough line to get me through quite a few trips down to the lake as I'm learning how to do this. Next key in the equation is a swivel. So I'm gonna go something very easy, $1.37. This is a size seven swivel. There's 10 of them. Should be the perfect size for what I need. Okay, now we need a way to get it down there. And this is a piece that you will wanna use a variety pack for. So what I have here, these are egg sinkers, $5.12. Perfect, it has all different sizes for different places that I'm gonna be fishing. These are the right style, multiple of the right sizes, and it's everything I'm gonna need for, again, quite a few trips down to the lake. So that's it, that's all you need for the power bait setup, those few things, but there is specifics on those things that you want. So watch this again, watch it over, go to your local Walmart or wherever you are shopping and try to pick out these exact things because it's gonna make fishing much, much easier for you. Okay, on to the bobber. That was simple. All you're gonna need is something like this here. This is a quarter ounce float. Our, my favorite ones, the ones I'm gonna be using in this video are actually addicted trout floats, but you really don't need anything any bigger than this. This stops on your line, so you'll be able to see the bite and you don't need to buy anything else for this setup, which is simply a bobber and everything else I've already bought goes with this method. Each little bit of gear that you buy will end up working with each other all in unison. So method number two, bobber. Now my favorite and last but not least method of all is a spinner. And you can see the selection at a place like this. The beautiful part of this is pretty much all of them work. You just have to find your favorites. I'm gonna show you my favorites, but as you start fishing and you start catching fish on this method, you'll start to see which ones work best in your local area, and then you'll start to be able to buy exactly what you need every time. As you can see, there's a dang good selection. I'm gonna instantly go for a value pack in this selection. And my very favorite, one of our awesome sponsors is Rooster Tail. Thing about a value pack is it's gonna do exactly what I'm about to tell you. You gotta have a variety. It's a safe bet that every time you go to the lake, the same spinner will actually work. So getting a variety pack like this is very cost effective. This is $6.99 for all these spinners, or you can come up here and buy each and every single single one after you've figured out which one works by buying something like a value pack. So a value pack is always a good thing to have when it comes to spinners and weights and different varieties of stuff like that. And on that note, my second favorite lure that I'm gonna buy, aside from the value pack because I know it works, is the Panther Martin. My very favorite size is 1 8 size four. It'll be a number four on the package, either yellow and silver or the gold and black. Two of my very favorite options, so I'm gonna grab one of these each. And there we have it, that's all we need. Okay, so there we have it. Everything that you need to go out multiple times. This isn't just a one-time investment, which is the nice part, unless you absolutely hate this. But everything that you need for about $75. But now we have to figure out where to go. Okay, step number two after getting all the supplies is to find out how to find these slippery little fish. And the best way you can do that is with technology, whether it's on your phone, whether it's on a computer, I'm gonna go to our friend Google. And what I'm gonna type in in Google is trout stocking report in my local area. Whatever that area might be. I'm gonna type in my local area, but here on Addicted, we don't say where we're at. So as you can see here, in almost any state in the union, all 50 states stock trout at some form and at some time in your local areas. So we have lake, county, blah, 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 species. Now what this is gonna tell us is exactly where we want to target for the best chance of actually catching fish. What they do in most places and in most states is they, certain times of year when the conditions are favorable, they will take trout from a hatchery and stock them in some sort of local pond, lake, or any sort of fishery that you have close to you. What this is gonna tell you by date and by the amount of fish that are stocked is where your best chance of fishing is going to be. I always recommend going to the place that has been stocked the most recently and the place that has been stocked with the most fish. And this is probably the most important part and factor in finding trout and becoming successful on your first outing. Okay, I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Well, this looks like a good place. Would you know it? There it is. You think there's fish here? All right, now there's a few different ways that you're gonna put these things on your line. If you're using the power eggs, which we're gonna start with, it's very, very simple. Now normally you're gonna to wanna to use at least two of these power eggs to get your gear to float up off of the bottom and in front of the fish. So I'm gonna take my little hook, I'm gonna take my eggs, through the top one that I have available, I'm gonna hook it straight through, run it up the line right to the base of the hook, 
and we are ready to fish. Our second option is something that we didn't cover in the store and it's the little power puffs. What these things are is already little cut pellets. Very simple, very user friendly, and very easy to get fishing with. These things are a little bit bigger, so I'm only gonna use one. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hook it right through the center of that puff, put it up towards the edge of my line, give it a tiny squeeze, and we're ready to fish. Now our third method is the old faithful, and that is the power bait dough. All I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my finger run it through the base of the bait in that little cup. Get myself a favorable chunk, I'm gonna put it in my palm, and I'm gonna do a little circle here to roll it up in a ball, and it turns out just like that little egg right there. Now, all I'm gonna do is take my hook, I'm gonna embed it in the base of that little pile of dough. I'm gonna give it the little diamond squeeze with my fingertips, and there we have it. We are ready to fish. And now, it's time to go do some catching. Well, here it goes. I got my first simple power bait dough on the line. What I'm gonna do first before I cast it is I'm gonna dip it in the water, and that is actually gonna keep the stuff on the hook itself. You can see how it kind of made it more of like a, a Play Doh y texture. It's actually gonna stay on there. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reel my line up to where I have about eight to 10 inches of line out of my rod tip, as you can see there, in between my sinker weight and my rod tip. I'm gonna reel my reel over to where the round part of this little flippy thing, what we call the bail, is towards my finger. If it's over here, I go to grab it, it goes against my bail, I close, I open it up, and when I go to cast, it'll close it on purpose, and you won't get a good cast, and your power bit will fly off. So I'm gonna make sure this round part is facing up. I'm gonna hold my rod with my pinky finger and my ring finger, just like this. Hold that with my index, open my rod. The way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna put my rod tip behind me, now I'm gonna turn my head. My rod's still over here, everybody. I'm gonna turn my head. I'm gonna to look to where I wanna cast. I wanna cast right about there. So what I'm gonna do, and you'll watch this in this cast, I'm gonna take my rod tip, I'm gonna point it right towards that spot like it's a gun. And as I move my rod tip forward, I let go about halfway through. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that thing sink. You can see it hit the bottom because my line became slack. You can see it on the line here, all slack, or on the water. I'm gonna close that little flippy thing we call the bail take about two or three cranks. You can see my raw tip starting to bend as I reel that, just like that. And then I'm gonna take either a log or stick or a, or a store-bought rod holder, prop it up against my rod. Where today I have a boat lamp and my bag. And I'm gonna let that thing sit. We're fishing. We've got one, he's got one. Look at him go. Oh, that's a nice freshie too. That's a nice freshie. Fish on. Okay, so I have switched sides of the lake. Some time went by, I didn't catch any fish, and one observation that I made, which is a very important tactic when trout fishing, is to look around the lake, watch other people, like I said, make friends, get to know the people around you, and visually see where the fish are being caught. I was seeing fish getting caught on a different part of the lake, so I made my move, and now I'm gonna make a couple changes. I lengthened my leader a little bit, I have about another foot long of a leader, and now I'm gonna start using my power eggs. Okay, just like I said before, I'm gonna hook one of these little power eggs onto my hook, slide it up, and that way it'll kind of hold on there like that. That should float it, and we're ready to cast. I think I'm getting bit already. I guess it's just the wind. So, the convenient part of fishing a setup like this one that just sits on the bottom of the lake is that you can fish two setups. Check your local regulations just like we did when we found our spot to fish, and in some areas, it will tell you that you can use two rods at the same time. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Let's go show you rod number two. So this one is a beauty. The best part of doing this setup with the rooster tail or the panther martin is the ease and the fishability of this tactic. All I'm gonna do is open the package, which can actually be harder than the fishing. I'm gonna take my tag into my line that came out of the tip of the rod and just simply tie that spinner 
right through the main eye of the top of the spinner and use the exact same fisherman's knot, seven wraps for good luck. Back through the eye of the line that I created. Lick it and stick it. One thing I like to do, you can see how I have quite a bit of a tag end here. I'm gonna take my knife or my scissors. I'm gonna cut my line so it only has about two to three inches and I'm gonna safely dispose of that line into my bag. And we're ready to fish. Okay, so here goes my spinner setup. Now the beauty of this is, is it's a very effective way to even possibly attract fish to your bait setup. So I am gonna fish within a very close proximity of my bait rod. I wanna be here close so that if it does get a bite, one, I can see it, two, I can set the hook and actually get the fish. But three, the reason I wanna be throwing my spinner around the area that I'm fishing with my other sort of bait setup is because it might pull in and attract fish to this area. Even if they don't bite my spinner, there's a very good probability that they'll see the bait down on the bottom, come over to it and eat it, and eventually be on your hook and able to land. So what I'm gonna do here, I like to try to make it some sort of a, a semi-mathematical equation here. I wanna break the lake down into parts. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna pick clockwise or counterclockwise, whichever way you prefer, depends on if you're a dyslexic person, and I'm gonna cast at those areas, making my way strategically around. So my point with that is, is my very first cast, I'm gonna make about 45 degrees down the bank, just like that. I'm gonna point my rod tip at my spinner, I'm gonna reel consistently, making sure that I feel a little bit of pressure on my line. And I'm gonna bring that thing steadily in so that that spinner blade is spinning the entire time as it's going through the water. <clears throat> and really it doesn't take a whole lot of speed or reeling speed to make that thing happen. So here we go again. Now that I made that cast, I made it about 45. I'm gonna pick a spot about 15 to 20 feet further to the right and I'm gonna make another cast. I'll let it sink for a one, two count. Point my rod tip at it. And a little pro tip for you guys is to give that thing a little bit of action as you're reeling it in. I'm not just doing a straight reel and relying on the spinner blade. I'm giving it those little flicks with my rod tip. I'm making that thing move around and I'm giving it a little bit more action than just the simple blade spinning. That in itself can be very, very effective for getting bites. Now that I made that cast, I'm gonna move it about 15 feet more to the right. Now I'm straight out, basically very close to where my lure or my uh, bait setup is. Now you can see why this might actually bring a fish in because I started over here, that might have got the fish's attention. The second cast, the fish might have followed. The third cast, the fish could be searching for. And then that fourth cast, I might even either get the fish or that fish will be coming into the exact proximity of where I casted my bait out. Fourth cast is gonna be right down the pipe, right towards where my other lure is, trying not to cast over my line and create a tangle. fifth cast, I'm gonna move it just, again, the same distance, about 10 to 15 yards to the right or left. That was such a far cast. <laughs> All right, so I've covered the spectrum. I've casted clockwise from left to right all the way around the spectrum that I have. Now I'm gonna move about 20 or 30 yards, about 20 steps down the bank and start the system over again. Okay, now that you've learned how to fish power bait off the bottom of the lake, we're gonna show you how to use an addicted bobber. Now the beauty behind this bobber setup is that it is very, very similar to our bottom fishing setup. The only change that I have to do to make this change in tactic is take my line off of my swivel. I still have my leader and my swivel attached. I'm gonna remove my egg weight and I'm gonna simply add my bobber. So the way these addicted bobbers work is they come with two rubbers on them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the top and I'm gonna remove the bottom. My first step is to add the rubber tubing to my line above my bobber. Pull about eight inches out, take my bobber, slide it through the provided holes, grab that, pull that extra little bit of tag line out, and then take my rubber tubing, put it over the top little post on my bobber, my next step is to take my bottom rubber tubing, add that rubber tubing to the line, like so, 
and then carefully slide that bottom rubber tubing over the bottom post of my bobber. Now I'm going to reattach my egg sinker and depending on how heavy your bobber is, whether you buy the trout addicted float, whether you buy a bobber from Walmart or wherever it is that you're getting your materials, I'm gonna add a, at least a quarter ounce, if not a little bit less, which is my egg weight. Split shots, which is another variable of weight, works just fine for this sort of situation, but I'm gonna add my egg weight again below my bobber and then tie my leader and my swivel that I already had set up back onto my bobber setup. and now we're ready to fish. Okay, it is now time to fish our bobber setup. This is a very similar setup to fishing off the bottom, but the reason you're gonna to switch to a bobber is if the fish are suspended up farther than the leader length that you can create on your bottom setup. So as you can see, I have my bottom setup where the line would slide through the weight, the thing would float up off the bottom. Now I wanna get up off the bottom, have this thing floating to an exact depth. And that's how I'm gonna use this thing. That's why we put the bobber on with the little rubber hoses is because this thing moves up and it moves down your line to the appropriate depth that you want to have it. So whether you're using power bait, whether you're using any other kind of worms, and again, if this is the only video you've seen here from Addicted Fishing, you guys, go onto our playlist, Tips and Tricks for Trout, here on YouTube, and you will learn everything that you possibly need to know about this kind of trout fishing. But we're gonna move this thing up and down to the appropriate depth. The power bait itself actually floats, so one thing you wanna make sure of is that your bobber is set above the weight itself farther than your leader is long. And what I mean by that is I have about a three to four foot leader. I need to have at least a four to a five foot depth here on my bobber. So I'm gonna go even a little bit deeper and it's time to go fishing. I'm gonna do the same thing I did for my bottom setup. I'm gonna set this rod up, leave it untapped, unharmed, and let it hang out and sit out there in the water. I find the bobber works the best a lot of times. One, if there's a slight breeze on the water, or two, if you're having a hard time figuring out where the fish are in the lake. The thing about throwing out a bottom setup is you have to make it through the weeds and you have to have the appropriate depth on your leader setup to be above any sort of vegetation that's on the bottom of the lake. When you use a bobber setup, you're going down from the surface towards the bottom. So it's easier to stay out of that brush, out of that structure, and be in the strike zone where the fish are at. So I'm gonna set my rod down. I'm gonna let it slowly drift. With this setup, you can even leave your bail open. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna leave this bail open. I'm gonna set my rod down so that as this bobber starts to move across the lake with the slight breeze that we have, it's covering more ground, it's looking for more fish, and it's giving me a better chance at success. And that is a wrap for today's video. And if you guys want to see more fun and educational videos, just like you saw here today, go down to the YouTube channel here that you're already on. Look at trout tips and tricks. And there's a ton more educational and entertaining stuff that you can watch that'll help you get better and better at fishing. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I'm actually heading out to go film another one right now. So until next time, everybody, you all stay fishy. We'll see you out there.